and welcome to your weekly horoscope for the week of May 11th. And I can't even believe it's May 11th, but here we are. And this is an absolutely busy week. The planets are shucking and jiving just all week long. So make sure you are rested, make sure you are hydrated and you are ready to uh, experiencing the shift of energies that happen this week. Because when the planets are shifting, we hear humans down here on planet Earth, we can kind of sense them a little bit before, but it's like, whoa, what? Ha why is there a little topsy-turvy happening? Why does it feel like the energy was going, 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 and then boop, I'm kind of stalled or I'm adjusted? Where do we take the opportunities? Where do we put ourselves to have the best use of that energy? So we're going to talk about that this week, but truly make sure you are fed, you are nourished well. You guys know I'm still on my alpha. The Juice Co. stuff. So you can check that out in the description box down below, of course. And there's the $10 off coupon. So be good to yourself this week because it's busy. Okay, jumping off right into the beginning of the week, Monday the 11th. This is just busy energy. Mercury is going to move into its home sign in the energy of Gemini. So coming home is great. He's comfortable. He's in domicile. Mercury in Gemini is wonderful if you need to do any kind of negotiations, if you need to have a communication flow on a project, if you're studying, whatever. Mercury is perfectly comfortable and happy to shine bright and be useful here. Now on the same day, Saturn is going to take its retrograde beginning in the energy of Aquarius and then moving back into the energy of Capricorn. But as he begins his retrograde here, this is the energy where our seriousness starts to shift over the structures in our lives, right? So we start to pay attention to our responsibilities. What are our obligations that we've had? Are we fulfilling those? And remember, in the first part of this retrograde, what we're going to be looking at is, you know, the responsibilities we've had about new things, about technology, about groupings, about change that has come into our life. And as this retrograde continues, and especially as we get into July, we're going to review old things and see if those structures, those beliefs, those ideas, those whatever they are still fit for us. I think for many of us during this Saturn retrograde, since Pluto is also retrograde at this time as well, I think so many of us are addressing these ideas of loss or death or the shift of change that creates um like something has to die off you have to say no to something in order to say yes to something else so don't be surprised this week if you start to feel like there is a little bit of a heavier vibe it is still useful a retrograde is asking us to go back over something so that we know it's crystallized and set and good to go so that we can move on with a strong foundation underneath us okay now, also this week on the 13th, Venus is going to go into retrograde in the energy of Gemini. Now, when a planet is retrograding, it's asking us to re revise, re-edit, reconnect, rethink, reunion, re-re-re. We're going to go back over some things. In the energy of Gemini, this is a 40-day period where we're going to rethink our relationships. We're going to Gemini think. We're going to rethink. We're going to re-communicate in our relationships. We're going to re-communicate about re-communicate over our finances. We're going to make different financial decisions. We're going to make different decisions over things that have values. And one of the most valuable things I think we're going to be rethinking is the information we have have up here and the information that we let in. Gemini is an energy of information, right? It likes to get the information, gain the information. But the question, especially at this particular time is, what are you feeding yourself? What is the value of the information you're taking in? Are you receiving information from people who have your best interest in mind? Or is it just information that really is about something other than what you're trying to get from the information, right? I think it'll be a very big question that happens during this Venus retrograde, but certainly you'll be coming at the information of relationships and finances from a much different angle over the next 40 days. Now, on the same day that Venus goes retrograde, Mars shifts into the energy of Pisces. Now, Mars in Pisces is, this is a challenge for this guy, right? Pisces is very watery. It's very dreamy. And the planet has to get on board and act like the sign. It has to get things done like the sign. So Pisces wants to be dreamy, a little bit vague, a little bit evasive, definitely fantasy and create. And Mars wants to run. So it's like running in water which is, if you've ever done an aerobics class, it's really great for getting your heart rate up, right? But it's not really great for getting anywhere quickly. So I would suggest your opportunity over this next period of having Mars here until we get to June is don't fight surrender to win with this particular energy. Use your energy for creative projects. 
Use your energy for charity. Use your energy for cleaning out things. Use your energy for forgiveness, right? Because if not, you're going to be over here just running, having your heart weighed up, getting all sweaty, and absolutely getting nothing done. Now, if this is a placement that you have in your chart, if you naturally have Mars in Pisces, this will light you up a little bit. This particular area of your world may actually feel a lot more motivated. But again, see where you can surrender to win to get the most out of this particular placement. Now, when we get to the 14th, which is um, the day that Jupiter is going to follow everybody else's lead and he's going to head into retrograde as well. This is a time when Jupiter retrogrades. We go back over the wisdom in our lives, right? The wisdom of the structures we've had, the wisdom of the traditions we've had. It's, it's the wisdom of what has been and also what we are going to review because it doesn't need to stay anymore. I really feel like Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter all retrograde right now is asking you the question to review your talents, review your desires, do some genuine soul searching because Jupiter is the energy of the truth. He wants the truth. He wants the higher truth. He wants the truth of the big picture. And he also wants you to say, where have you been being overconfident about something? And you still need training. You still need education. I want you to have those desires. I want you to have those good things. Jupiter's our biggest benefic planet. So he does want you to have good things. But do you have and are you equipped with what you need to get those things done? Right? That's a very big question. So I think that during the Jupiter retrograde, time make sure you evaluate that in a very honest and truthful way as we end the week on the 15th we've got trines that take us out of the week which are pockets of opportunity or ease now they can easily be missed and you can do nothing with them but you can also just know that you've watched your weekly horoscope and and use them to the greatest of your advantage on the 15th we're going to see the sun come into a trine with pluto which is great because the sun and pluto as they work together the sun is bringing that light heat life and vitality a very big see me kind of energy and Pluto retrograde is over there saying yep we need to redo this yep we need to acknowledge this and the sun's like okay let's do that right so anything that's been hidden issues of loss issues of death issues of needing to shift and evolve and change any hidden issues come out and they're ready to be dealt with for transformation for the move forward then we see the sun um, on the 17th coming into a trine with Jupiter who again is retrograde as well. So I think that this is a really nice all around time for making transformative progress forward. That sun Jupiter is wonderful. It's a wonderful opportunity to get something done right? It is a wonderful idea to have that big picture. Like it's like it shines that light on the thing that Jupiter's asking you, what do you still need help with? Right? And the sun's like, oh, that. I need help with that over there. So make sure you use these trine energies as we wrap up this week of kind of jostled energy to answer the questions truthfully. Do your review this week. See what needs to transform. See what needs to shed. And also see where can you use your Mars and Pisces energy to make the most of this creative week that has just been handed to us. And please keep in mind as well. Because our outer planets are all in retrograde at a global level, we will also be reviewing structures and things like that. And this may just create a delay in experiencing the goodness that those shifts are going to bring to us. So I wouldn't be surprised that even if it's down to your personal life, something has shifted at a global level and you don't see the benefits of it for several weeks down the road, but it doesn't mean that the benefits of the change are not coming, okay? All right, you guys like this video comment, share, subscribe. It's a busy week of visitors over at the Eat and Greet. We start off the week with Patrick Arundel coming over. Gemini Brett will be here to talk about the relationship between the chart and the sky and why our eclipses in June are so important. And we're going to end this week with Christopher Renstrom coming over to talk about this Jupiter and Saturn retrograde energy. It is a week of phenomenal eat and greets and I cannot wait to share them with you so make sure you are watching for the watch pages watching for the live links and I will definitely keep you posted okay I love you guys so much and I look forward to seeing you next week bye everyone